Somewhere Better by I underslash am underslash Ellie on AO3. Episode 51, Chapter 8, Older. An hour later, both Hisashi and Shota were in the back of an ambulance, both of them breathing into oxygen masks. Hisashi had a cut on his eyebrow from where he had fallen and hit his head on a table, and Shota had a large, purple bruise on his jaw, but neither had signs of a concussion and they were able to go home for the night. When they had gotten into the apartment, the woman's lips had been blue and her skin had been awash and pale and red splotches. But she hadn't been dead. And after Shoda had canceled the man's quirk, she had taken in a huge lungful of air, coughing violently. They'd been just in time to save her. The man hadn't been hard to take down, but the police weren't joking when they said that the man was physically capable. It took some work to do it. He punched Shota in the face, and when he closed his eyes on reflex, had managed to use his quirk on both of them before Shota could activate it again. Backup had arrived just as Asashi had cuffed the man. The paramedics told them that, after breathing with an oxygen mask for about 15 minutes, they were able to go home. Shoulda wanted nothing more than to collapse into his bed and sleep for a few years. But responsibility awaited him in the morning. They took the train home, both of them drowsy, lightheaded, and cold. Shoda had fumbled with the keys so much, he had to get Namuri, who was sleeping on the couch in the living room, to open the door for them. Once she left, Shoda only just managed to remember to change out of his hero costume and into pajama pants before collapsing into the bed falling asleep mere minutes after his head hit the pillow. Hisashi hadn't been so mindful. He'd barely managed to take off his jacket before giving up and falling asleep himself. He still had his sunglasses on, dangling off one ear, and his hair was still gelled up and slicked back. He's gonna hate himself in the morning, Shota thought, before falling asleep. Izuku had figured out how to use the alarm clock all by himself, and he said it at 3 a.m., he woke up by himself, too, and brushed his hair, showered, and got dressed all by himself. It was Sunday, and Sundays were pajama days, so all he had to do was change into clean pajamas from his dirty pajamas. He walked real slow from his room into the kitchen, making sure not to wake his unkies. He dragged a chair into the kitchen, too, so he could look over the countertop. He got bread, butter, milk, sugar, and cereal from the pantry and fridge as well as a gallon jug of orange juice. He put toast in the toaster and pulled it all the way so it would be real warm and the butter would melt just right. Then, while he waited for that, he poured a bowl of cereal. He only spilled some of it and dumped a spoonful of sugar into the bowl as well. Then he poured a giant glass of orange juice. He put the toast on a plate and it was a bit crispier than he wanted and spread globs of butter on the bread with a knife. Then he took the plate to the table, went back for the bowl, and then again for the glass of orange juice. He had to be real careful so he didn't spill anything else. Izuku was real excited because today was Ankisashi's birthday, and birthdays were fun. People had parties on birthdays, and cake, and pin the tail on the donkey, and people had friends over for birthdays. For Izuku's fifth birthday, Auntie Mimi brought Kachan over and they had lots of fun and ate loads of cake and got to beat a paper machete donkey to bits. Kachan had done most of the hitting since when he'd gotten upset that the donkey hadn't cracked open right away, he used his quirk to break the donkey into pieces. It had been real fun. And Izuku liked thinking about that day because that was one of the last days before the doctor told mommy his foot was weird and dad went to America and Kachan got mad at him. Izuku was going to make sure that Ankisashi's birthday was great and he was going to start by making breakfast. Once everything was on the table, he grabbed napkins and silverware and put that on the table too, before washing his hands. There was a lot of sugar and butter on them, and walked to Anki Sashi and Anki Sho's room to wake them up. He knocked on the door. There wasn't an answer, so he pushed it open. Anki Sashi and Anki Sho were both asleep, but they weren't sleeping under the covers. Anki Sashi was snoring real loud, he was wearing his hero uniform, the leather pants, and the black undershirt, but he wasn't wearing his jacket or his boots. Anki Sho's hero uniform was in the middle of the floor in front of the bed, his capture weapon too, 
He was wearing pajama pants. He was curled up into a little ball in the middle of the bed, like Izuku slept in his bed sometimes. He stood beside the bed and shook Unkisashi's shoulder. Unkisashi grunted. He shook his shoulder again. He grunted again. Unkisashi, he whispered. Unkisashi! He slapped him on the forehead. Unkisashi snorted, sitting up quickly. His glasses went flying onto the floor, and he blinked hard. What? He said looking around before his eyes fell on Izuku, and he jumped, clutching his heart. Jesus! Sue! Ankisashi said, rubbing his forehead. Izuku grabbed the small box on Ankisashi's bedside table, handing it to him, and Ankisashi slipped his hearing aids on. What's going on, baby? Izuku grabbed the man's hand and tugged him along, and Ankisashi sighed, standing up. Izuku saw Ankisho uncurl from the ball and spray out on the bed taking up all the space. No getting back to bed now, Akisashi murmured. Izuku tugged him out onto the hallway. Izuku, it's three in the morning. Why are you... Akisashi froze, staring at the table. Izuku smiled proudly. Oh, my God. Toast! I made toast! Izuku said, pulling him towards the table. Akisashi sat down, still gaping. And cereal! And... And... I made you a glass of orange juice. It's your birthday, so I... I wanted to make you something. As a present. Izuku grinned at him, happy expression falling slightly when he saw him. His eyes were red and glassy. He was crying. Why was he crying? Izuku had made him breakfast. You're not supposed to cry when you got a birthday present. You're supposed to be happy. Izuku was supposed to have made him happy. Why is he crying? Had he done a bad job? Was he in trouble now? What? Why are you crying? Izuku asked, eyes widening. Are you sick? Is it because of the toast? Is it too crispy? I can cut the black bits off. Ankisashi picked him up, hugging him close and spinning him around. Izuku giggled, hugging him back, relief making him slump against his uncle's shoulder. I'm sorry for crying, Ankisashi said, settling him down. I'm really happy. Thank you, Sue. It looks great. Ankisashi sat back down picking up a piece of toast, tearing it half, and biting the middle that wasn't black. It tastes great. He took another bite, seeming to avoid the black parts. Izuku understood they were probably really gross, before taking a spoonful of cereal and taking a big bite before coughing violently, hacking into a napkin. Are you okay? Izuku asked frantically, patting his unky on the back. There's juice. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Ankisashi said, biting into the napkin a final time before dropping it back on the table. I just wasn't expecting so much sugar. Izuku had put quite a bit of sugar in the cereal. He had done it because Ankisashi liked sweet stuff. But maybe he'd put too many scoops in? Don't worry about it. It's... It's... <laughs> Ankisashi coughed again. Face flushed. It's fine. It's great. Don't worry. He took a sip of orange juice. And that, at least, seemed to be something Izuku hadn't messed up. Ankisashi drank half of the tall glass in two gulps before setting it back down on the table. He turned to Izuku. Why are you so up early anyways? I could have helped you make my birthday breakfast. Yeah, but you're not supposed to. Izuku protest. Birthdays are supposed to be all about you. You're not supposed to help. And I wanted it to be a surprise. Did I mess up? A little, Ankisashi explained. The toast was a little burnt. And you're not supposed to put that much sugar in cereal. Or any at all. But that's okay. I really liked it. Thank you, Sue. You liked it? Even though I messed up? Izuku asked tentatively. Baby, I've been eating your Uncle Sho's food for years, Ankisashi said, standing up and putting his dish in the sink. I'm immune at this point. Izuku laughed, and Ankisashi smiled, even though he looked really, really tired. He'd done a good job. When Shoto woke up later, his head was pounding. He wiped his mouth and grimaced at the scratchy feeling. He'd have to shave soon. He didn't like shaving. 
When he stood up, several things became apparent at once. There was a dreadful ache at his wrist. His headache was going into, wow, death might not be so horrible after all territories. And he'd have to iron and press his uniform because he left it on the floor. He rubbed his wrist and jolted at the cold feeling it brought. Right there on his wrist was an off-pigmented patch of skin, wrapped right around in the shape of a... a handprint? When he touched it, the skin was unnaturally cold. A scar from the killer's cork. Did Asashi have one? Did the women they've had been protecting have one? Would this have lasting damages? Was the skin dead? Was the muscle underneath the skin damaged? Or is it just the topmost layer? Had the oxygen just stopped there? Some sort of after effect of the killer's quirk? Was it permanent? He should go to the hospital, take Asashi with him, get it checked out, just in case. He heard laughter floating through the doorway. Asashi and Izuku. Had Asashi woken up Izuku? Why had he not woken Shoda? He put on a pair of basketball shorts and a gray hoodie because it was Sunday and he didn't really have anything to do. Nothing of real importance. Besides maybe celebrating Asashi's birthday with Izuku. Asashi and Namuri, and he didn't really need regular clothes for that. Hisashi and Izuku were in the kitchen table. Izuku was eating apple slices with a small bowl of peanut butter. Hisashi was drinking what smelled like tea from a yellow mug with a sun smiling painted on the side. Oh, hey baby. Hisashi called cheerfully, raising his mug in greeting. His hair was down now and damp with shower water. Hi, Shota said, sitting at the table. Hisashi took a long drink from his mug of tea. When did you get up? Oh. 3 a.m. or so. It's all she answered, setting his mug down on the table. Shota blinked in surprise. Yes, your nephew was kind enough to wake up at 3 in the morning to make a birthday breakfast. It's all she looked a bit hysterical. I see, Shota said. Anki Sashi said I did a good job, Izuku exclaimed cheerfully, popping another slice of apple into his mouth. It was fun, too. I made toast and cereal. Uh-huh, Shota drawled. Oh, and babe? That's all she said, grinning a bit manically. We're gonna need a new toaster. Good lord. I find that chapter hilarious and endearing. I love that ending. I love how Hisashi is... Th that part of Hisashi where he's like death definitely sleep deprived um he probably only had like 30 minutes to an hour of sleep um god i can't even imagine how to have that little much of sleep um but uh as i was saying so his little attitude the way that he is behaving towards the end it reminds me so much of how i am when i'm really sleepy i either become extremely irritated and an absolute motherfucking bitch or i am a manic mess in the sense of like I am very sarcastic very cheerful very like yeah mm -hmm. nothing could go wrong I'm definitely not tired of running on zero sleep what makes you think that you know kind of you know a little rude honestly um so it reminds me a little bit of a Sasha here except mine is a little more of sarcasm with a little bit of sparkle uh or you get drunk echo yeah you get echo uh no filter no no brain to, to mouth filter just Whatever fucking comes out of my mouth is whatever I'm thinking at the moment. So I once... Yeah, that's that's how I confessed to my crush once. Yeah, that was not fun. Nope, not fun. Nope, not fun. I call it drunk echo because I've never been drunk. And I feel like that's how I would be if I was drunk. Just no brain to mouth filter. Just nonsense of wordings. Uh, I know some of uh, the people down in the Discord... Yeah, y'all have seen Sleepy Echo at least once. That type of Sleepy Echo, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a... I pulled an all-nighter once. God. It was marking up in the 24 hours since I've fallen asleep, and I was... I was... I was... I was pushing it. I was pushing it. Anyways. Um, apart from that, there's no much notes I want to say. Uh, the next one is called Pain. I feel like Chapter 9 is where we start leaving off, like where I left off. Chapter 9, Chapter 10, we're starting to get into the points where it's starting to become a bit fuzzy, right? 
pain. Uh, and notes for warning if you're sensitive of violence of any kind, I would suggest looking at them. Oh shit, look at the warnings. I never look at the warnings. Uh, trigger warning for blood, injury, bullying, uh, ableism, mention of anxiety, etc. Oh, it's this chapter. Oh my god, it's this chapter. I think I know this chapter. Oh my god, I love this chapter. Oh my god, I think I know this chapter. Okay, I think this- I, I think I've read this chapter. I think- I don't know. I think I know what is going on, but I'm not 100% sure. I could have just gaslit myself into thinking that this was a chapter when it wasn't a chapter. That's happened before. Uh, that was... Ooh. Mind-boggling. Could have sworn it was a Mandela effect, but nobody else agrees with me. Nobody else remembers that chapter. I guess I'm just going insane sometimes. You know? Um, but apart from that, what I wanted to say was I recently purchased an Aizawa, uh, body lotion. I am so happy. I might get. I was. I was planning on getting the body. Uh, the body butter as well, but it's sold out right now. There is no body butter, and there is also. Um, there is also an Aizawa body scrub, and I'm definitely getting the motherfucking Aizawa body scrub. I'm getting the. I'm. I'm getting that one. Like I. I might purchase it after we're done with this. Uh, I'm not joking. I'm being dead ass. I might purchase it. It is literally something that I'm interested in. Um, my, okay, so my, my friends think it's crazy. <laughs> they think I'm pushing the line, right? They think like, okay, Echo, Echo, there's a line. This is the line. You're all the way over the fucking there. Like, you're bouncing on that line, Echo. Like, stop it, Echo. Uh, my brother thinks I'm insane, but like, my brain sees thing I like, my brain go burr. You... That's all I could explain. Like, I, I remember it got here. It's, it's, it's one day delayed and I was super sad because it was one day delayed. It was supposed to arrive, um, two days ago, right? Uh, either two days ago or one day ago, right? So I was super sad that it got delayed, that I didn't receive it yesterday. Cause I'm like, no, it was supposed to arrive. It was supposed to arrive and then it arrived today. So I'm happy. I was really, really sad for like a second there. I was like about to start crying. Cause I'm like, no, you cannot tell me I got lost. If it gets lost, I'm going to not gonna finish that sentence. Uh, anyways, as always my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.